Kind of a blue pit even, huh? <laughs> Can you hear me back there? <laughs> My wife said, you want to speak to men and you wear a pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> she shook her head. Uh, well, who has a, I have the Bible with them this morning. Everybody? Uh, be careful as we drive out there because uh, the weather is sort of nasty. But most of all, make sure you know who's driving. Remind me of the time the story goes. This gentleman was driving down the Philadelphia Turnpike, Pennsylvania Turnpike, and he came to the side of the roadway, saw a terrible accident. The car was one side, upside down. That was a that was a woman and a man and two children. And they were out. And he stopped and he said, you know what? I, something happened. I wonder if I could, uh, could find out what happened in this uh, accident. I don't see anyone that, that's conscious. And he looked over and he saw sitting on the curb an orangutan. And he had his, his paws in his head and his face. And he said, well, let me go over and talk to this guy. He said, uh, you understand what I'm saying? He said, oh, oh, oh. He said, uh, <laughs> I want to know what happened here. I want to see if I can put together, put the piece together to see what happened. He said, I want to know what the kids were doing in the back. He said, oh, 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 oh. He said, oh, they were fighting. He said, well, what were the grown-ups doing in the front? Oh, 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 they were drinking. He said, well, then who were driving? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> so watch who's driving the car. Could be in the right day. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. The most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Come before you, thanking you for your son Jesus who gave himself for our sins. And we just praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, uh, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, <laughs> verses 13 through 14. I got a title, and it's in the scripture. It's Quit Ye Like Men. Uh, the King James Version for Quit Ye Like Men reads this way. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. Be strong. Let all things be done with charity. In Paul's letter to the churches, each congregation seems to have a different approach to the emphasis of God. And Many times, the efforts were of no avail, they failed. Those in Corinth were seemingly filled with uh, varying ideas and differences. Paul's first ep epistle to them is filled with admonition and even rebuke. And in the first chapter, he scolded them. He scolded them for being divided. And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 10 through 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you Say, I am of Paul, and I am of Paulus, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? But I was subject to this where we place emphasis. And if you're reading from the King James Version or the American Standard, who has the American Standard? It states the same thing in verses 13 and 14. Uh, watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit, ye like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. It is obvious as to what Paul is admonishing them to do because of the four phrases that are basically similar in the scripture. Uh, in the present age, it's, it's hard to, you ever heard anybody say, okay, quit ye like men. Have you heard it? Raise your hand if you heard if you hear that in today's terminology. Well, 
I looked at that and I thought, I wonder what he's talking about here. So I had to go do some research on this. And I went to, of course, Thayer's Greek English lexicon. The Greek word used by apostle is andromoa, which carries the meaning of to show oneself as a man, brave. To make a man of or make brave. Different translations read differently, and you, if you don't have the American standard, yours may say one or the other. Uh, verse one may say, "Act like men, uh, uh, equip yourself as men." But the word, according to there, means to show, uh, to present yourself, to show yourself, and as men, this is very important because. We need to also show ourselves at work, in our communities, at church, in our schools, and God help our schools today. Because the moment they took God out of the out of uh, out of the schools, they just went downhill. And now almost every day you hear of a shooting because God said, okay, if you want me out then you handle it. And you know we're not very capable of handling anything. In the description step of, of trying with this, uh, the basic meaning is indeed courageous, strong, and brave. So this includes standing against false doctrines and criticism with kindness yet boldness. As a man and as a God, fearing man, as a Christian, our responsibility is to know enough to know God's word so we can refute false doctrine. When you hear something that's not of the word of God, he should make a stand. Now, it's obvious if someone is preaching <coughs> in the pulpit, he can't stop and make a stand. That wouldn't be the proper thing to do. However, if the church, if that congregation is teaching false, then you should leave. You shouldn't be around anyone who teaches false doctrine because that's one of the most dangerous uh, tools that the devil uses. He brings a little of Christ, a little of Christ in, and then he just keeps adding. He didn't take God out of the picture when he told Eve uh, about. Um, the things that God was withholding. He said, yeah, but God is withholding. He didn't take God out of the picture when he approached uh, God with the sons of God in, uh, concerning Job. He was right there. But he said, here's what will happen if you take your protection from around. So men, our job is to show ourselves a quick you like men in studies, our children, our responsibility. Don't leave it to the schools. Don't leave it to your friends. Or don't leave it to the employment agency. It's your responsibility as men to set the standard in your home. This is why it's so important that you present yourself and be an example. Does this mean, someone said this morning, said, wasn't it nice to know that uh, your children uh, know the Lord? I believe that was Jim when I spoke that. Why is that? Because apparently someone in that home has set an example for those children. Does that mean they're going to follow out? No. But it does mean that you've, you've uh, adhered to the word of God and you've trained your child up in the way it should go and therefore <clears throat> the training will not depart. Does someone say, well, he's out there, he's really... Uh, making havoc. He's just doing everything under the sun. But he knows. And your responsibility as a teacher, you can't force this child to accept Christ. Although as parents, it crushes us when they don't. And we think, well, well I failed. No, if you train that child, that's your responsibility. God-given responsibility. So you train them, and as they grow up, usually, they turn out pretty good because 
of the training that God said if you train them with those words. I, my daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, <laughs> pray for her. Her name is LaBelle. She's at the point, she says, she's out there. And uh, I'm four, uh, well, we lost uh, uh, my older son, my older daughter, my, and two sons I've lost. So uh, LaBelle is the youngest. And LaBelle, they're all trying to get accepted Christ coming to the church. And she's left the church. And she, and you think, what did I do? Did I fuck fail her? And she approached me and she said, you know, Dad, you didn't. You trained me right. I just, I'm just not ready to accept that. Now, the, the training made me, made me feel good, but I still was crushed because that's my child and I want to see her uh, follow the Lord. So you keep LaBelle in your prayer. Paul wrote this to Timothy about uh, about being an example in in uh, in First Timothy four twelve. He says, "Let no man despise your youth, but be you an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Be an example." I was at a church once, and it why was this oh heavenly? And you think, what a heavenly bunch. And when they walked out, that's where the conversation changed. The cursing, the drink, the smoking, and all this stuff. I mean, I'm not on things, don't get me wrong. But there's an example that we have to set for our children because all believers, because if there's a young believer and he's watching you. Of me, and we're not setting an example like Paul telling uh, young Timothy to do, then they, it's going to confuse them. They're going to wonder, what's, what's right? They hear the pastor speak of one thing, and they see, and sometimes even the pastors do things different than what they're, what they're speaking. So the example is not to say it, the example is to live it. And the conversation is do it, do it around the believers. That's the first obligation, well, that's all. That's where it all comes out. We can hide it when we go around the corner and nobody knows it. But we can't hide it there. So if Paul says, you be an example around the believer. And he also said in 1 Thessalonians 2.10, you are witness and God said also, God also. If Paul said, I don't want to put myself in, your, in the position I'm telling you. You're witnesses to me, and God is also how holily and justly and how unblameably in love I will I behave, I would say, I'm the mom you but to believe. In other words, Paul said, I didn't just talk it or write an epistle saying what you should do. I set an example. My example was to show you how to live the Christian life. So Paul, as, as one of the greatest men that I re ever read about, uh, and one of the most intelligent, and, but yet he came down to the level of, of the believer. He didn't use fancy words and fancy his education. He said, all I have is lost for Christ's sake. I count it as nothing because Christ, he had found Christ on the road to Damascus. So our example starts at home. Our family, our children, man, we quit like men among our family. And unfortunately, the women set the example too much. And bless them. God's going to use whoever is willing to accept that. But the man's role is to set the example, not the boss or the rule, but set the example and then 90% of the time, your, your, your spouse will follow. She will follow your, your lead. If you're living the life and setting the example around her, and not on things, but on living for Christ. Do we make mistakes? Yes. As Jim mentioned about his son, <laughs> got to run to face the consequences of the good and the bad. When we do something, when we set an example and it's bad, it's on us. When we set an example and it's good, it's on us, but it's through Christ that it's good. Because Christ said, all good things come from God. 
So when we do the good things as men, and we set the example, then I don't believe, according to God's word, that we have to worry about how our upbringing. See those two guys sitting right there? There's another one or two of them. They were like this when I met them. Well, maybe a little high. They, they've never been that small. Uh, watch them grow up. Now, Zach told you, and you know his testimony, his background, and isn't that something? Isn't that how, see how God brought him? Amen. Okay. Amen, that's right. The wife yeah. set the example in that family. <clears throat> and she had no choice. God put it on her because God wanted to bring Zach back to his place. And God used his wife and he used his brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. That Ray, I want to tell you, I deal with uh, care ministry. I do hospitals, I do memorials, I do counseling, I do weddings. That's the, but I do feeding the poor. I do anyone that needs food. And I told Ray, I said, you know what? As much as I am patient, by the grace of God, with people, I'd have given up on him long ago. I'd have scratched him off my lips. But praise the Lord for you. You never gave up on him. Set a good example as a man. And when he did, Zach saw how much love and patience this man had for him. That's why Paul is saying, in all love, not just doing it and saying, I'm righteous, I love the Lord. How do we love the Lord? How do we, how do we show an example of how we really, really care about God? Remember when Jesus said, you, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in, uh, when I was in prison, you visited me. We show God through us, through what we do for others. Not by being great speaking. We should be great speaking, and I'm not. That's not my forte. I can speak, but I wasn't called to be a speaker. But I was called to what I'm doing, and that's care ministry, and being concerned about those that are hungry and needy. And we always like to set up a food pantry wherever we go so we can set it up. And it's not finished yet, my man. Uh, your your, your mother-in-law got it going. We got the stuff there. But we need to set up a day during the week where the community can come in and, and get food if they know that they need it one day a week. But that was an example. And because of the example his wife set, he came to know the Lord. Now look at those guys back there. I see them every week. Unless they're working. Praising the Lord. It's four of them. Right? I know, the daughter, the one who used to go to the uh, punch stand with the sweet punch and put sugar in it. <laughs> Do it! She, it's sweet enough already. I know, but she never forgets that. <clears throat> but that's the example we set. When we quickly eat like men, we show the example so the other thing, when there's an unsafe person sitting, that unsafe person will say, he may not tell you, that person it's different. They only not just speak it, but they live it. And that's how we set the example because God is in the plan. Uh, I kind of feel bad for them. Although they get, they, they're fed, like Paul said, the gospel is being preached whether it's out of contention, no matter what Christ's name is. Because the power is really in the name, right? And the power is in Christ. Well, some of the movie stars, they give to the poor, they go out and they give a lot. And it's not because they understand the Christ calling. So it's not Christ in it, but the people are fed. But how much more it would be if those that do that would do it in the name of Jesus? Amen. Would that be something? You could, you could really applaud that. And Peter sums it up. Peter says, and uh, the term means display. And we are on display all the time, folks. We are really on display. And whether you know it or not, someone say, we're, this, you're the only Bible someone's going to read? Yeah. That is so true. This is what this quote <clears throat> means. You're on display. I'm on display. And when we do something that's against God's uh, uh, will, we know it because the Holy Spirit convicts us. Peter says, uh, 
Second Peter 1, 5 through 10, a little long, but bear with me. And besides this, give in all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Now I'm going to stop that for a minute. Someone said, well, you know, I'm kind to this person. <coughs> There's a difference between kind and loving. Paul, he was expressing the difference. I can be kind to someone, and I don't have to have a bit of love, an ounce of love for that person. Love is going the second mile, realizing the person's need, whether it's for Christ. I never read where Christ hugged or kissed anybody. But he loved, and he suffered, and he died. So just being kind. And we should be kind. But that should be added with the love. Being kind is, no matter what type of, of, of day I'm having, I should be kind to you. I shouldn't yell or scream at you. That's being kind. Uh, being gentle. But love is a different, that's the extra mile. Someone mentioned, I believe it was uh, this young man sitting back there about a prison ministry. Yeah. You didn't think I heard you, did you? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, what's your name? Uh, what's your name? Dale. Yeah. Uh, love is going to, to a prison ministry. Love is what you guys did this morning coming out of the rain. <laughs> uh, love going the extra mile. Learning about Christ. Kindness I do when I meet somebody. <laughs> love is what I do after I meet the person. Okay? So I'll, I'll continue. For these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Exactly. When we do, when we start walking that Christian walk, and that's the conversation every day, that's living for Christ, we stumble, we get up, we make a mistake, we go and we ask forgiveness. One thing we men don't like to do, that's a display that, that's very much against us. Our pride won't allow us to be humble. And that's my biggest problem, and whenever I do, my wife says, oh my goodness, and she forgives me when I say it. But we don't like that because it may, we think it makes us look not, not man. It's the pride. <clears throat> when we ask someone does something to you or me, or we do something to them, we should go to them. And you know, and according, do it according to scripture. That's this plan. What? Love. Grace. Because you can't use the word Christ without attaching grace to it. You can't. You can't say, I love the Lord, but I don't like John Doe. Hmm. I'm not going to do anything for him. He really upset me. Think about it. You can't do it. I never, other than the Pharisees, read what Jesus would be abrupt with anyone. He would speak the truth, he would talk to them, but he never yelled or scream at anyone, except money changes in, in the temple. <laughs> and that, but he, he, he let us know what God's house was for, the house of prayer. Okay? So, set your example, display love, very crucial, because the scripture said, and Peter, Peter says that love covers a multitude of faults. If I love you, you may be a weasel. <laughs> but that I love you and I'll do anything. Well, look at our children. They do some things that we think, oh my goodness. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> That's right. But we love it. Right. And what covers that fault that that child has? 
love. The love we have for them. That doesn't mean we don't, if the kids would say, you don't love me, you yell, you made me do this, you made me clean my room, you made me clean the gutters. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jim? Y'all don't love you. You made me do the cutters. Huh? You don't love me. Yeah, that's that's displaying love because love covers the multitude of faults. And when we when we example love, when we display love and be an example, Christians and unsaved all there's something different about that. I want to know more about this in the Book of Acts where they met and how they broke bread and the Christians were together. So the whole how they love one another. And that was the commandment Christ left in John. He said, love one another. He left that. So as we set the example, love should be at the top of the list. And because of that, we can tolerate and be patient. That's where the patience comes in. We gotta wait. Pray. I love this person. They're not, they're they're a they're rough draft right now. But pretty soon they're gonna they're gonna be the complete uh, uh, package as we I wait for them. So love gives us the patience to wait for people. So therefore, that should be at the top of our list as men. Does it make it mean we're well? No. It does. I'd rather be thought of as a wimp in love than be thought of as, and to be thought of as a tough guy and didn't like anyone. Mm. Okay. So this morning I hope that there's something to say uh, that you can take a hold of. Maybe not everything, but just remember I gotta I gotta have love. That's what Christ died for. And he was he loved me so that he waited for me. He didn't, he didn't have to wait for me, even after he died for me. Could have killed me. Yeah, but he waited. And Amen. because of his love, his long suffering, and scripture Peter says, God is not slack in, it, in, the, in the way we count slack. But he was willing that all should be saved, come to the knowledge of Christ. Because that's what he's waiting for. That's his long suffering and his patience. I'm waiting. I'm not going <coughs> to I'm waiting for everyone and I'm praise the Lord that he, he waited and he touched my heart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to do some things out of the ordinary for me, but praise the Lord, he did it. And uh, thank God for that. Let's pray. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for your love for us even when we were sinners, you died for us. And we love you, Father, because you first loved us. No other reason. You showed your love, and, and we we accepted that love and turned our hearts through your Holy Spirit. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.